Hey guys, Drew here from SwingTradingBootCamp.com and let's talk about what we did in the market this week ending June 4, 2010. Uh, here you can see a chart of the diamonds and it uh, just goes to show you what we've been doing for the last uh, month and a half. We put in a significant lower high here. We sold off obviously the big May 6th debacle day here. We rallied back up, put in another low here, sold off again and now last week we started another retrace. Uh, going into Friday, this bar here, we started to think that price was kind of stalling and that we might be setting up for the next leg down in the market. Uh, and this week uh, was a little tricky for short-term traders, and I'll show you why. On Tuesday, we had a lot of short uh, swing trading setups on our watch list. We sent those out to our newsletter subscribers and we posted some into our blog. And there was just a ton of short setups on our list uh, for Tuesday morning. Uh, you can see price gap down Tuesday, but then we rallied most of the day, and then late in the day we actually rolled over and sold off pretty hard into the close. Um, some of our short positions uh, actually got filled. Uh, they were filled towards the end of the day on the afternoon sell-off. Um, what we started to notice towards the end of the day was the volume was really pretty low for this type of reversal pattern that we see here. We like to see these reversal patterns on higher volume uh, to show that sellers really stepped into the market and were possibly going to drive the price down even lower. Uh, but you can see here in the diamonds the, the volume kind of uh, died off a little bit as it did here in the spiders. Uh, and then Wednesday we had a little bit of a gap up here and then price just took off right from the start rallied almost all day and ended near our close not a good sign for our short positions but uh, we are already in them so we're just gonna manage our trades accordingly and then Thursday came and we had kind of a, a lackluster day uh, kinda close near mid-range on even lower volume um, but some of our short positions didn't act so well we had uh, a good amount of short positions on and some of them acted really well and some of them didn't act so well but let's take a look at some of the individual sectors and see kinda what we're talking about here you can see the real estate sector uh, the ETF is IYR and you can see that uh, last Friday we were thinking that this was the significant high and that Tuesday would put in uh, another leg down so Tuesday we had the gap and the rollover and then Wednesday you can see price action just kind of didn't really do much it kind of went sideways up a little bit but nowhere near this previous swing high like we did here in the market okay we rallied right up to the swing high actually broke through it and closed right about at it over this swing level and if you look at IYR it's nowhere near that swing showing some relative weakness there uh, XHB the home builders was another one really strong sector prior sold off here a little pullback put in a swing high here and then the gap down and we actually sold off on good volume here another good sign for us and then uh, Wednesday and Thursday really didn't do much volume dies off and then Friday volume picks back up on the sell-off these were some good acting short positions for uh, the, the, the primary sector that didn't act too well for us was the semiconductor sector and some of the shorts that we were looking at uh, and you can see how we have the chart annotated here we have a lower high the second lower high and then we're setting up almost right on the trend line okay for another move down and there are some stocks uh, in the sector that were were showing the same exact chart pattern so we're looking for this pullback up to the trend line and acceleration down and Tuesday we thought we had it um, but then you can see on Wednesday price rallied and Thursday price rallied again past this previous swing high and actually closed well above it now in the in the sector in the in the ETF you can see that the volume is kinda of dying off on this move but let's take a look at some of the individual stocks in that sector and you'll see what I mean here's that previous swing high we get the the kinda of sell off on Tuesday that we were looking for and then Wednesday and Thursday price just rockets up volume increases uh, not a good sign for our short position so we actually st got stopped out of some of these some of them well went down far enough for us to break even on the trades the other ones we actually lost a little bit um, and then Friday you can see another reversal of volume more volume comes in to accelerate price down again now this is a, a, a kind of a common pattern that you need to look for whether you're day trading or swing trading we call this a two-stage reversal pattern uh, a lot of times you'll see a, a lower high lower high and let me go back to the SMH to show you what I mean a lower high here second lower high and then you want to put in the third lower high but look what happens price stalls and then it actually goes back up creating a second wave of buying so in that case what we do is we just adjust our trend line 
and put our upper trend line at the top of this bar once we get the confirmation like we did on Friday. And this happens sometime because you have such a dominant move down, now you get two waves of buying to kind of cover their positions. And it shows a little bit of relative strength, but with the market being so weak, uh, it's a good opportunity to re-enter into some short positions. Uh, if Even if you got stopped out, which we did on Friday, we re-entered some of our uh, short positions in this sector. Uh, let's look at a few more in the semiconductor sector. Mixum was actually one that um, didn't didn't go too past didn't go too far past the swing high, uh, so it didn't stop us out. And then we got the acceleration down on Friday. But let's look at uh, Xilinx. Okay, Xilinx actually rallied up nice and strong right up to the 50-day on increase. Look at the volume coming there. It's a sign of things maybe to come, and it didn't trigger down on Friday either. LLTC. Uh, the move down here, lower volume, okay, which concerned us, and then price rallied up past the swing high and closed above it on increased volume. Yes, we're below the 50-day, but we had to have a stop in here when we initiated the short position, and now we get another move down on Friday. Uh, not really in the semiconductor uh, sector, but you can notice uh, PCAR here kind of did the same thing. Uh, we noticed Tuesday here on the sell-off, Wednesday's uh, kind of sideways stall, and then Thursday jumped up above the swing high, and now Friday you see it gap down with the market and sell-off, uh, just like just about everything else. Now some of our uh, uh, other short positions that actually acted uh, well, uh, we'll go ahead and show you. You can see the swing high, which actually was put in Wednesday here for Home Depot, uh, trading right near the 50-day. Last Friday, it actually broke through. And now Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, that sideways price action, no rally up on Wednesday and Thursday here, okay, just like the market did. So that's something we want to look for. And we, we noticed the relative strength, so we felt really comfortable holding these positions short. So we enter here last Friday and get a nice acceleration down for a profitable trade into uh, Friday's action. Let's look at LNC. Here's the prior swing high. We get a rally right back up right back up to the swing high we end up closing below it on lower volume okay again a good sign that's what we want to see if we have to take some pain in our positions we want to notice the volume and price action in conjunction with the swing high to see what we're doing here in this case because we were short in conjunction with this the, the swing high to see if we want to hold that position we're not going to get long because the context of the market is definitely short so we hold on to this position, we put our stop in place. If it would have closed above this, we would have been stopped out. It closed below it and then we get our, our uh, next move down on increased volume on Friday. Okay, Some really good setups we had in the real estate sector. Uh, Kim, you can see the price action here. Sideways, no rally, didn't come near the swing high and then the acceleration down on Friday. Okay, this symbol is O, same sector. Okay, didn't come back to the swing high, right up to the 50-day price stalling, low volume, and then uh, increased volume on the down move on Friday. Okay, FedEx was kind of the same chart as LNC earlier. Okay, here's the swing high, rallied above it, but we're looking for the closing price. The closing price actually sold off and closed well below that swing high. Volume did not increase, and now we get our move down on Friday. It's not. It, it's a difficult hold, yes, but if you have your plan in place and this is what it calls for, this is exactly what you need to do. Okay, LPNT, same situation. If you would have triggered a short here, we're under the 50-day, lower high, triggered the short here. Wednesday, Thursday, lower volume comes into the market, stays below that swing high, and now you get your acceleration down on increased volume. Okay, another uh, nice position to hold on to. Zion. Uh, one of the bank stocks we've been watching, lower high, lower high, put in another lower high here. Friday triggered short. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, that relatively weak pattern sideways price action as the market went up, and then the acceleration down on Friday. Dow Chemical, another good short, triggered on Friday here. Here's the swing. Never even rallied even close to it. Uh, on these uh, on these two days, Wednesday and Thursday, price went sideways, closed lower, and then accelerated down on increased volume on.